I just want to share a little bit of the background of how One Vibe came to be. Uh, you know, in 2008, after the general election at the end of 2007 in Kenya, there was post-election violence. You know, Kenya is consisting of uh, about 42 tribes, and uh, after this election, the situation was polarized, and people were killing each other. In my hometown, the Luo people are the majority, and that's my tribe. But there are a lot of Kikuyus that live there that are being kicked out of town while there are people that we grew up with. And so we organized a concert to bring these people that were fighting together. And, you know, at this time I was a DJ, you know, just touring and doing music within the country. And specifically this evening, you know, that evening when we organized Unite the People concert and saw the impact of, you know, people leaving their weapons and coming to the event venue without a weapon and you know, people stayed from five o'clock to eight o'clock the next day. Nobody wanted to go home. It was like a safe space. So, you know, in my mind, I started feeling like this is something we need to make available for people on a daily basis. Not once every five years when we have elections, not once a year. Uh, and so that's where the journey of One Vibe Africa began. You know, I transformed a DJ business into a non-profit organization, literally by asking the DJs that played that night to contribute a part of the money that I had paid them, you know? So we went and registered One Vibe as a non-profit organization in Kenya in 2008. Then around that time, I was also working as the field director for Africa for an organization, a larger non-profit organization. So I was working in about six other countries around Africa. And that's also how I met my wife, you know? My wife and I worked in Ghana and Liberia together. Um, then in 2010, I, I came to Seattle. In 2009, I first visited, uh, you know, I visited about eight different states. I was fundraising for the previous nonprofit I was working for. Then I came to Seattle and met my father-in-law. Funny story is, um, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, whenever Americans come to Africa, and especially if they have beautiful girls and and their kids in the continent without their supervision or their presence, they're always afraid. And so when John, my father-in-law, was leaving, uh, you know, we were at the airport drinking Tasca, the beer you guys are drinking, he said, you know, Simon, you better take care of my daughter, you know. And my understanding at that point was like, you need to marry my daughter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's, you know, how we ended up with the three girls that we have currently. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know, uh, I want to also share a few stats with you guys. So in 2013, when we formally began our education, music, and art program in Kenya, we only served 68 kids in the slum of Manyata where I grew up. We provided art programs, you know, we brought instructors to give them painting classes, traditional African music classes, DJ classes, dance classes. And now we are serving about 30 kids per week, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and this means we've also created over 20 full-time jobs for young people that, you know, in 2013 were beneficiaries of this program, but now they're running the whole program, you know? And those of us, those of us from Africa and Kenya who are here know how difficult it is to land a full-time job without knowing somebody, you know? And so imagine kids in the slum coming in to learn and they end up with a job that, you know, is now making them people that uh, are like role models. For example, One by Films, which is just one of our activities in Kenya, is now the biggest content producer for Kisumu County. Um, I'm sure you guys know Black Panther, the movie. The main actress in that movie is called Lupita Nyong'o, and her father is the governor of Kisumu County, where One Vibe is based. So imagine King County, um, all the content from King County being produced by One Vibe. That's how it looks. Vibes! It's huge. So, I also want to say that in Seattle, One Vibe is now being seen as the hub of the African uh, community. You know, One Vibe works with 
young people. I personally mentor about three people. One is a Congolese and two are Kenyans, including Sally over there, who is the immediate former Miss Africa Washington State. Um, so, so really, you know, One Vibe is a hub here in the in the diaspora, we are producing a podcast called Diaspora Connect, which demystifies the lives of African people here in the diaspora. It's a way for us to share our story so that people back home don't imagine that we are living in a place where, you know, the streets are paved with gold and when you open your tap, milk and honey is flowing out of your tap. You know? <laughs> These are mysteries that we are trying to demystify by sharing our stories. And, um, you know, I want to just deepen this conversation by saying that, you know, this work started by, you know, a relationship I had, by, I had with my older brother. You know, some people called him Manas, some people called him Field Marshal because he was, he was very militant. And, you know, we grew up in a place where you had to be strong to survive, you know. Uh, it was real ghetto. You know, here in the States, we have projects and areas where life is difficult, but in Kenya, it's extremely difficult. For example, you know, my brother was a gangbanger. You know, he was literally robbing people. And I remember one night, uh, you know, him and his groups of uh, gangs had been robbing and it became rampant that, that the neighborhood uh, wanted to basically lynch all the thieves in the neighborhood. So there was like a group of 200 people going door to door and taking all the thieves and lynching them. So they came out to our door and, you know, our door was made out of wood, you know, just a simple door. And we knew that our house was surrounded. You know, we had over 200 people there chanting my brother's name and ready to take him out. So my mom woke us up and she said, look, I'm going to go out and you guys cannot say that he's in the house. So we hid him in the ceiling in our house. And so my mom walked out and we locked the door and the people in our community respect her because, you know, she's, here electricity is a common thing. Everybody has electricity. But my mom was the first woman that brought electricity to our neighborhood. So people knew her, you know. Um, so she walked out in the midst of this chaos and was able to calm these people down and tell them, look, my son, is a thief, I accept that. But he's not here today, and I'm going to take action. And in weeks, my brother was in uh, you know, a juvenile facility where young people are kept, and his life began deteriorating from that moment. You know, um, I remember sometime at night, he'd come back home with, with wounds you know, from being stabbed. And I would nurse him without telling the rest of my family members that this guy, is involved in very dangerous things. So I would see the path that he was taking, and I would also see the path that my mom was taking, observing the community. You know, from 1997, my mom built an orphanage home that has, you know, served and helped a lot of people go to school. And, you know, HIV was prevalent in Kisumu. Globally, Kisumu had the highest HIV prevalence in the, in the 90s. And so a lot of kids that were like 12 years old had lost their parents and they were heads of families. And my mom worked in the local hospital, so she helped get kids food every Sunday. And over time, our home became an orphanage. So I was like, my mom is doing this and my brother is doing this. Which, which direction should I take? And so I began looking into what my mom was doing and I became a business person, I became a community servant. And when I moved to Seattle in 2010, I began looking for people that, you know, aligned with my, my mission in this world, you know. That's how I ended up finding people like Nchuguna Wagishuru. Uh, I ended up finding people like Waela Buzaki, Uwura Runga, who is not here. And I built this community of people that also understand what this type of struggle is all about. And so tonight, I really want you to, you know, to understand that One Vibe is not just a hype. One Vibe is something that was started out of, out of a deep personal experience and I'm really lucky that I'm able to stand in front of you and create opportunities for young people that will find it completely impossible to even progress in life. 
So I just want to thank you and I want you to, to consider giving generously when Jake and Agneta begin doing what they know how to do best. So I really thank you for being here tonight.